Welcome everyone. Let's set up and activate the iPhone 14 Plus. So first of all, if you click the power button here, you're going to see the hello screen. If you do not see this hello screen, you've already set up the iPhone 14 Plus, which means it's already activated. So let's start off by sliding up where this home bar is. This is this white bar. Just flick your finger up like so. And now we are brought to the language view. So you just want to select the language here and then select the country or region where you are from. So now we have the quick start menu. This is useful if you have an iPhone you're trying to upgrade from. You'd bring that old iPhone next to the new one and you'll have an option on the old iPhone to transfer all of the data. You can do that if you would like to or you can see here set up manually, just tap on this one. Now we have to enter in Wi-Fi. If you inserted a SIM card already, which you can only do uh, on an iPhone, not from the US, you can use mobile data. But in my case, I'm just going to enter in the Wi-Fi password right here. And now we should be brought to activation. So if you've entered in your Wi-Fi or inserted a SIM card, you're going to see here, it may take a few minutes to activate your iPhone. Uh, once the activation is done, you will only need to reactivate your iPhone if you do a factory reset, uh, or in some cases, if you update the software using your computer, then it will ask for activation again. Otherwise, once you have activated once, you're good to go. If this screen here says iPhone lock to owner, then you will need to ask the previous owner to remove the lock. And of course, if they cannot remove the lock, then it may be a stolen iPhone. Uh, it really doesn't matter if it is or not because you can't use the device until the lock is removed. Therefore, I would recommend that you uh, return the device, potentially report the seller, uh, depending on, you know, does it seem like they genuinely forgot to log in or are they trying to scam? So now after activation, we have these other options here. So this is data and privacy. You are forced to select continue. Uh, the data and privacy section here just discusses all of the data which Apple uses. Then we have face ID. So this is the facial unlock system. So you look at the top of the iPhone every time you're on the lock screen and it will unlock the device. So if you would like to set that up, you have the continue option here. You just select continue, get started, you place your face in the frame, just go like that, just a quick rotation, and you can see the scan is completed. You also have the option to use face ID of a mask. If you do select this right here, it will ask for a second scan. You just repeat the process of moving your head around in you know a circular motion. If you select don't use face ID with mask, you can see face ID is set up. Now it wants a passcode to be created. So you have right here passcode options and you can select the passcode type. So by default you have a six digit pin. I like the four digit, uh, digit pin personally because it's easier to remember. So I'm going to enter this one in. Now it says apps and data. So if you have an iCloud backup of you know an old iPhone or even an iPad, you would select restore iCloud backup. You will need to sign in to your Apple account and then it will do the restore. You also have a restore from Mac or PC. Uh, if you created a backup on your Mac or PC, then you can restore that one here. If you have an old iPhone, you can select transfer directly from iPhone, bring the old iPhone close to the new one and follow the on-screen instructions. Move data from Android. Uh, the Android device will need to download an app called move to iOS. You'd follow the instructions and then you'd be good to go. Uh, if you don't have an old device to transfer from or you would like to start uh, from scratch, see here, don't transfer apps and data, just select this one. Now we need to enter in the Apple ID and password. 
So you can skip this if you would like to. I'm personally going to skip this. But the Apple ID is used for messages. It's used for Apple Pay, which is useful if you're trying to do payments without your card. It's useful for the App Store, which is needed to download apps. Most likely you are going to download apps on your iPhone. And so if you already have an account, you enter this one here. But if you need to create an account, you're going to see forgot password or don't have an Apple ID. Select this one. And you have here, create a free Apple ID. So completely free. Or you have set up later in settings. So I'm going to select set up later. You can see it gives me a warning because you definitely want to create an Apple ID. But in my case, you know, I don't want to, so I'm going to select don't use. Now it's going to ask for the iOS terms and conditions. iOS is the uh, software which the iPhone uh, 14 Plus is running. So I'm just going to select agree. You're going to get this screen that uh, essentially says Apple is going to automatically keep your iPhone to the latest iOS. So we'll just select continue. You have here iMessage and FaceTime. iMessage is well, text messages, but from Apple, it has more features than regular SMS. FaceTime is video calling, uh, it's Apple's version. So you have the option to continue or ask for your Apple account. I'm going to select not now. We then have location services. So I recommend you turn this on because a lot of apps will need it. However, keep in mind, you can manually turn off access for apps which don't really need your location, like Facebook, for example. So I'm going to select enable. We then have here set up mobile service. So this is eSIM to those wondering. So if you needed to insert a physical SIM card, you don't need to go to this screen. At any time, you can just get the SIM ejector tool from the box, remove the SIM card tray, insert the SIM card, and you'll be sorted. However, if you have an eSIM QR code, you just select use QR code, or you can select use from uh, a nearby iPhone and your old iPhone, uh, as long as it's in range and on the same Apple account, will actually uh, be able to transfer the number over. I'm going to select setup later in settings and I'm going to skip the eSIM setup. Siri, so this is a voice assistant. Uh, I personally don't use Siri, however, I'd recommend you select continue, give it a try. If you don't like it, you can always turn it off. In my case, I'm just going to select setup later. If you're wondering, when you select setup later, it just means you turn it off, okay? Uh, you can turn it on at any time though. Screen time, so this will share how long you're using your iPhone a day, how many notifications you get a day, how many times you unlock the device. So I'm going to select continue. If you want to hide your addiction, then you can always set up later. We then have iPhone analytics. This just drains battery, so I'm going to select don't share. We then have appearance, so we have dark mode. Light mode, you can always change this at any time later. I'm just going to select light mode. We then have display zoomed. So if the content is looking too small, you just select zoomed. Shows a preview here. But I like standard. I'm going to select continue. We then have emergency SOS, which is discussing the emergency features. And now we have here swipe up to get started. So right now we are on the home screen. I'm going to have a tutorial on how to use the navigation gestures on the iPhone 14 Plus. So go home, multitasking, to close out of apps, switch between apps, all that good stuff. I'll we'll have a dedicated tutorial in the description. I recommend you check that one out. And with that being said, thanks for watching. See you guys later. Bye bye.